All right. Uh, so my name is Mike Emery. I'm the uh, site administrator here at the Cornwall Iron Furnace. So today we just wanted to go ahead and do an interview about uh, a little bit about your life, but also particularly your life as it pertains to the mine here at Cornwall Iron Furnace. So first of all, tell us your name. My name's Claire Bernard. I go by Nick. Okay. And how'd you get that nickname? <laughs> From my aunt. Years ago, I used to nip off the rosebuds. Okay. All for flowers, I guess. And she said, I'm, I'm a nipper or a nip, but never called me nip. Okay. But everyone else did. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so even when you were working, like your your colleagues in the mine, did they call you Claire? Did they call you No, I'm not. I, when they asked me, what, what do you go by? I said, tell everybody a nip. Okay. So I'm known, more known as nip for older people that know me. I mean, newer people, of course, will call me my first name. Right. But yeah, Nip, Nip's what I go by. So Nip Bernard, okay. So when were you born, and where did you grow up? I was born in uh, February 18, 1936. I grew up in Rexmont. I was born in Rexmont, and I lived there till, well, I worked in the mines. And only until recently <laughs> that I moved out of there. Okay. And you still live in the community, correct? Well, it's no longer Red Spot. I, I live in Cornwall Manor. Right. Which is not it's not very, part of Red Spot, but very you're very close. But it's very close. Okay. So so very, very good. <clears throat> so what what did your parents do for a profession? What job what jobs did they have? My mother worked in a factory, a sewing factory, and she stayed home most of the time to take care of my sister and other two brothers. So where was the factory located? In Rex. Rex the Park. one right in Rex Park, right yes. on Main Street. Okay. Right near the, where the right behind her place. Okay. It was originally on my father's proper. The factory was. Uh, of course, my dad, he worked at the mines. And, and his name? Dewey Bernard. Did he go by Dewey? He went by D.R. Okay, D.R. Bernard. It was Dewey Rob. Okay. He liked Dewey, D.R. Bernard. He was an engineer, he surveyed, but he had quite a position in the mines. He, uh, he didn't travel a whole lot. He worked over here in the main office, but, uh, he was involved with the borough, he was involved in a whole lot of things. So he was really civically minded aside from working here? He was. Okay. Yeah. So, but he had involvement with the fire company and, and he things did. And the school district, if I remember. Big time in the school district, yes. Okay. He was on the board there for quite a few years. Yep. So where, where was your family from originally? Uh, like what, what ethnicity? Uh, the Bernard family. My father was originally Italian. Okay. His mother and father were Bernardi, Bernard and I, Bernardi. Okay. From Italy, of course. My mother was, I guess, local. She was Pennsylvania Dutch. Okay. <laughs> so you're a good mix. Yes. A good mix. Yeah. Okay. So do you ever remember your father? Did he speak Italian? I don't think he could. He couldn't. Okay. No. So his parents kept that. So he was he born talk around the over kids. here. He wasn't born in. Okay. Somebody is. I don't know. His one sister was. She was born over there. She could speak Italian. She married. I'm talking about Ellen Mazzoni, which was his sister. She married a Mazzoni from Italy. He was an Italian. Okay. But, but they spoke together. We didn't want to hear us. We didn't want us to hear the Italian. <laughs> Well, every parent needs a, a language they can speak around their kids, so if you have it, use it, correct? Yeah. So, so what skills did you acquire while you were working in Cornwall as a miner? What skills? Yeah, what skills? In the mine. In the mine. Well, not any skill that I wouldn't get outside the mine. Like, we had to use picks if we wanted the ore to flow out. We'd pick it up and take it out, or a bar to 
pry on some big pieces. And they use explosives if big enough and tight enough, which I didn't ever did outside the explosive part, but the rest is just annual labor type stuff. Okay. All right. So when did you first start at Cornwall? When did you start your job? I started uh, I got out of school in 54, 57. Okay. 1957. 1957. So your father worked for the mines. Did he help you get your job or, or was this just something that he knew you were going to do? I don't think he helped me uh, other than my name might have, might have helped. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, but did you interview? Did you have to go talk to someone in order to get your job? Do you, do you remember kind of how that went? Yeah, they, they were, when they were hiring, they were looking for hirings. You had to go over to the main office over here. Okay, so that's, that's the one along Boyd Street. Yes. That Cornwall Manor now. You have to go there and apply for a job and take a test to see whether you pass physically, which we did. I did. There was two of us that went at the same time. And we both passed, and I don't know how long after that, told you, well, okay, you're hired, report to work, such, such a date, okay. which we did. So how many years then did you work at Cornwall, or when, when did you cease work here? 72 in the flood, I was working until the flood. Okay. And that shut it down, yep. All right. So what jobs did you perform while you were working in the mines? I was uh, a stuck stock man helper. There was two gangs basically in the mine. Miner crew did all the drilling and shooting to develop the open to get to it. And the stock crew come in there to draw the ore out and send it outside on a train pump. I was in the stock gang as a helper. Okay. Most of the time. There were times later that I did individual work, like cleaning up along the track. A little operation. You went ahead on a tr on a track with this bucket, and you raised it up, and boop, you pull the car empty far behind you. You dump this in the car to fill that up. It was like a cleanup crew by myself. Then we had that bucket pull. You unhooked it. I mean that car. You took that down and dumped it, brought it back to you to redo it. Do it again. Yeah. It, that, that, that's, like I say, that's a one-man operation. I have done that okay. quite a bit. So, besides the number three mine, did you ever work in any other sections of the mine? Different levels. You worked at different levels? Yeah, the number three. I have done, yes. Worked in the seven level, I mean the second level, and the sixth level quite a bit. Most okay. Most of was that typical that guys worked in very specific levels, or? Well, that could happen. I mean, depends on the shift you were working. Okay. That could make a difference. You come on, and you, I work three shifts, all three of them. Maybe day shift, I'd be working on this level. Then when I work the next the following week, I worked 311, it'd be with a different form and, and could be a different level. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Same job though, I think the stock man helper. So you could get around a little bit. A little bit. Okay. Yep. All right. So did you feel that when you were working, did you feel that it was safe? Was it a safe job? Uh, or were you that never come in my mind, I mean. We went down the slope, but underneath it, everything's concrete where, where we work. And the concrete alley went up. I mean, you went on, the train would take it down. Solid concrete all around. I mean, safe as you think it would be. I mean, unless you were worried about it, something. I mean, that part didn't cave in. Right. And then you go up to your level where you work. There, 
you were running, you, when you were growing the ore out, that different opening that you work around, you had to be a little careful there when you passed an empty opening, you know, it was, maybe there's nothing right there, but maybe up here it's still hanging. Okay. And most of the time you, you put a shot up there to shoot it loose, but when you walk by, you don't just assume nothing will fall out of there, you know, be a little careful. But as far as being afraid, I had never had any fear of working down there. Okay. Did, much there. did you know people that got hurt? Uh, I'm trying to think. None of my close friends or people I work with. Now there were some some injuries. Somebody might have uh, we call them fingers, but the ore would run out of. If they were a little too close, he might get caught and maybe hurt an ankle or something. I'm trying to think of it right now, nobody real, really serious that I know of, no. Okay. Okay. So you thought also, now you would have worn some safety equipment. You would have had, you know, as far as, did you have a helmet? Or... I had a, had a hard helmet. Okay. Did you have goggles or, or safety glasses? Uh... <laughs> You could, you'd have some, okay. but they, you weren't in fourth, you didn't wear them, I don't think. Okay, so that, that wasn't something that... <laughs> no, it might have, it might have depended on the foreman, maybe some foreman's, foreman's pushed it more than others. Okay. But other than that, yeah, goggles and a helmet. No hearing protection? No. Okay. So you thought that that was sufficient, you didn't have any, any qualms about being there with that equipment? I never had any problems. Okay. Okay. No. All right. <clears throat> All right. So, how much training did you receive when you started your job? I don't know if any. When I and everybody else started, they put you as a laborer, you call it a bucket, you cleaned up along the track, you know. With the trains ran. And this is all on the ground. This is all on the ground. Okay. And they'd load these cars up from an opening up here. And a lot of times it's spillage down on the track. And every now and then you'd clean that up. That'd be the, the first, a, a, new, a new arrival. <clears throat> It'd be his job to clean that up. So that's where the lone man started. Yes. That was their job. Okay. And he was called a mucker. Now, some place it wasn't a little mucky. Some place it was just like poor stone. Okay. Mucker, yeah, that, that's everybody started up there. All right. But so, did they ever assign you like someone to shadow or a mentor or anything like that, or, or were you just do this? And you were just so there, clean this up here. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, did you then? So, you pro how about equipment? Did anyone show you how to use any of the equipment or? or give you training on that? Well, very little training, like I say, when I ran that run by air, little, little machine on the tracks with a bucket in front. You had a lever to run it forward, and another lever to raise the bucket when you're against the stuff. And that bucket, you hold it down and boom, that dumped down in the car, the empty car. That lever was attached to it. I don't think, they might show you, hey, you do this or that, and here it is. Okay. It, it, it wasn't extensive, but no, it was. No, no, okay. it was not. Okay. <clears throat> so, so when, where you worked it, how well did the workers get along with one another? Well, I don't think any, very little arguing or bickering around. Okay. Around. So were there people that, that you consider friends that you worked with then? Yeah, there were. Yeah, people you got real friendly with. Yes. So, so how did that go between the workers and say the bosses of the foreman? Was there ever issues with that? Not a whole lot, and there were different <laughs> different qualities. Some bosses they told you what to do and they left you go. Other bosses, you know, they're more demanding and checking on it. They might say, hey, you didn't do that right. Most of the bosses were. They didn't tell you what to do, and they 
it kind of disappeared. You wouldn't see okay. much more. Yeah. They, if they, if they knew you could handle what you're doing. All right. They let, they you, let you alone and yeah. do it. Yeah. So how is the general feeling then amongst the workers for like the management, say the, the mine superintendent or the general manager? Uh, you probably wouldn't have a lot of day-to-day -day operation, but you know, what, what did people think of, of the management? Uh, right now, I can't think of anybody really complaining about it. Because the upper management, we never got any much feedback from them or didn't know where they were coming from. I mean, did they ever have meetings where you would meet the management? Like, was there any sort of thing where they would do periodically? Not, I'm trying to think. I don't think so. That, that is the, the workers. The, the management would meet. Uh, right, but not with the workers. Yeah, they, they, this is uh, Mike Weber. Do you remember getting an award for mining safety? The Sentinels of Safety, does that sound familiar? That, if you have that in record, I was on the safety committee way back and I believe we did win something. Ah, yeah. So you got to see the general manager then, right? Probably so, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So they were, you know, with the safety committee, there was some sort of a structure there where... Yes, where right, especially at first when I first started. Okay. But later on, I think that kind of wore off. I don't think we saw much <laughs> in the end. Okay. All right. So did you feel that you could trust the people that you were working with? I mean, because it could be a dangerous job, so there had to be a lot of trust with the person that's next to you. Did, did you have trust or... Did you have to be cautious? Yeah, I always workers? had trust. Like I say, I was a helper. I worked with a, another fellow who was in charge. Him and I, I worked with several different ones. We always got along well. I never had any problem. Can you remember any of their names, the people that you worked with? Yeah. Yeah. Let me give me a minute. That may come to me. Yeah, okay, we can, we can circle back if you right. get it. Did, did you work with Stumpy? Stumpy. Yeah, does that sound familiar? Is that number three? Stumpy worked in number three, yeah. What was his real name? Oh, I don't know. Stumpy. We I just, didn't work with him. We just no. knew him as Stumpy. Yeah, Stumpy. Well, we, we had another person that we had interviewed <laughs> that worked there in the 1960s. That would have been what, mid 60s, late 60s? 65. 65. Who was that person? Uh, Jerry Bowles. He was uh, one of, he was a summer person. He was one of the college students that had worked there. Worked with number three. Yep. Yes. I don't recognize that. A couple, of, couple of summers, I guess he did. Right. But he worked with a gentleman and he only known Stumpy. Uh, <laughs> and, and tried to All right, all right. So, well, that must have been another shift in another area then. And so, yep. another level. So. And we, we talked a little bit about safety and everything that you felt that, that you were safe. Were you yourself ever injured when you worked in the mines? No. No. I see you got all your fingers, so that was a good yeah. that, that was a good indicator. But uh, <laughs> all right. So did you ever collect any rocks or minerals? You know, while, while all of this stuff is coming out, did you ever collect anything or did you know anyone who did? I probably have a few stones, yes. Okay. Uh, the black stone. What do they call it? What do I mean? He would know better than The I'm magnetite? The iron ore? The iron ore. Not iron ore. They're a little black. Uh, pyrite cube? Yeah, probably. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. I may have some of those. We things. have some over in that cabin over there. Yes. Yeah, on, on the, on, inside the rock. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, that's what I got. So did you know anyone that, that collected in a certain way and said, hey, if you find if they, this? If they did, I didn't know. You didn't know, know it. No, okay. were, no one walking out with heavy lunch boxes at the end of the shift. So. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were working in the upper levels of the number three mine, did you ever walk out of the mine into the open? 
No, but I had something about walking. I did walk up the shack to walk out instead of taking the skip out like you normally do. Okay. I uh, thought it was good exercise. And at the end of the shift, like if, if the ship, if you loaded the ship like 3.30 maybe, like maybe 20 after, I'd start up the slope and I, I walked up more than once. Okay. Like that. And the day of the, the day of the flood, everybody walked out. I walked out that day okay. too. We'll circle back to that. We'll, we'll talk okay. specifically then about, right. about the flood then. So, now do you remember when the miners started using the ammonium nitrate fuel oil or the ampho explosives in the number three mine? So, did, did they use it there? If they did, I didn't. Okay, yes. Yeah, they, they did use it there. Uh, but see, what, what we used when we did shooting in our area, we used a regular stick about that being dynamite. dynamite. Yeah, regular okay. dynamite. We put three, four, maybe six together, jammed it amongst two big rocks, and okay. boom, off the toes, <laughs> right <laughs> How loud was that underground? I mean, like, where, like, when you were going and shooting that off, how close do you, how well, close were you to that charge? If we were, if we were doing it here, say, here's the opening. Right. We, we, on a, a young tree or something you use for poles, you know. Right. We put, if it was too far away, we just wanted to get inside there. We jammed it up there and propped it there. Then you had a cord, not a leg. Okay. You could down below, underneath, and set it off and, by electric, you boom, it would go, and you were in that area. So, okay. how far away were you? I mean, were you down the tunnel a little bit of the ways, or? A little bit, I mean. Okay. See, the main tunnel was here, and then we were up here, in another shaft of where we were. We were up in there. We put that in, walk down here, and down here, standing down here. Okay. You'd hear a long boom, and depends which way the draft is going. You don't want to be in the smoke, that might be going the other right. way. So you were, it's kind of like a campfire, right. you want to stand on the other side of the... And, and they told the, the drift, they call it drifts where we were. Okay. You, you warned the drift next day, hey, we're going to shoot! So they wouldn't scare them. They, they wouldn't, the noise of the smoke wouldn't, wouldn't affect them. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so you just hit on this a little bit. So. You were working in the mine in June of 72 when the tropical storm Agnes hit. So, okay. Right. So, do you remember what level you were working on that day? Or, I mean, were you on a lower level? Or were you well, lower I was level? probably down around the sixth level, I think. I wasn't in the second, I don't okay. think. So, how long do you think that took you to walk out from the sixth level? Uh, then I was a whole lot younger. I didn't have to stop once you started walking. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't keep going. You also had some motivation. <laughs> yeah, true. I'd say maybe 20 minutes. Okay. Not, not, a, not a real long time. No. So, how did you know you had to do that? How did you know, like, did someone come and tell you? I mean, did well, someone they, perform it? We, we were told the pumps were no longer running, so it was going to start, the water level started coming up. And they didn't have the skips running, which we used to go up and down. And so you had no choice, either walk out or stay there. All right. <laughs> Did well, you lose power uh, underground? Power? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, right, that's why the skips weren't working, the tramming locomotives probably weren't working, the pumps right. were out. Yeah, the power was gone. Yeah. Yep. Did you have light? Well, we had our own light. Everybody had their own light. Right, right. Battery Battery light. Light, I guess. Probably not. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, aside from your experience down underground on that day, obviously you lived in the area and, and the whole area was impacted. I mean, do you have other memories of Tropical <coughs> Storm Agnes? I mean, did it impact your house? Did it impact you know, anything else like that? that you I do remember one one area that was pretty well covered. It's, uh, if you could not hit a root barrel, 
right. from here and take route uh, 19, on nine, 419. 419. On the right here, you have a, a building now. You were on a little curve before you hit that straight, straight stretch for the cemetery, right okay. before that time. That was pretty well covered. I remember driving over that a whole lot of water. I don't even know if I could drive over the time. Okay. It's a little windy right there <clears> that area. Yeah, I, I, before straight the near, the near the cemetery. I, I know. Before that. Right. right. And there was a railroad crossing kind of in that area there as well, I think, that came across from the number three. If I'm thinking the right place you are. Maybe I'm not far enough down. Uh, <laughs> I don't think the one. Okay. No. All right. Maybe I'm thinking of a different area then. Uh, did you happen to go down to uh, talking back with the flood? So on the other end of Rexmont, there were dams at that point. Did you go down to that area to see what that looked like? Before? I did not. I, I don't think there was any problem down there as far okay. as overflowing. I'm sure they were full and running, running heavy, heavier right. than usual. I don't, don't know if I went down there to check it out. So, okay, so that day you walk out. Was that your last day of work? Or yeah. That, that was it. That was your absolute last day of work. Yes. So they, like, were you laid off that day, or how how they put that to you? Were you laid off? Were you fired? Were you, was it just done? Uh, uh, you go on uh, unemployment, of course. You start right. to go on unemployment, and uh, from there, from there, I got a job. A little bit later, with Beth and Steel. I went to the Lennon plant. Okay. And what did you do at that point? I was I was a bolt maker. I made three quarter inch diameter bolts, mm -hmm. anywhere from two inch to six inches long. Okay. But there, six days a week for a while. Wow. I made a lot of bolts. <laughs> yep. So and that, that that was you couldn't make enough for a while. All of a sudden. I slowed down. I was laid off in there. Okay. You made too many bolts. Evidently. Made them too fast. Made them too fast. So I was off for I don't know how long, not too long a period. You know, I applied up in Anvil, still bent of steel. Okay. And I got a job up there and worked up there about 13 years. So what, what was there in Anvil that you were working at? The large quarry. That was at the quarry. Okay. Or I did. I never worked in the quarry. I, I worked in the uh, in the uh, big Portland cement. Oh, Jesus. The crusher. Where the rotary kiln. Yeah, the kilns. Yeah. Okay. Worked in the kilns. There's a name for that. The heck. Calciner? Lime plant. I guess lime plant. Lime plant. Yeah, yeah. That make, works make, too. make a lime. Yeah. yeah. So when you were initially you know, laid off after that, I mean, did people think that they were going to reopen, that they were going to, you know, pump everything out, or did everyone kind of say, that's it, we're done, that, that's, that's I, it? I, maybe at first they were hoping that this would stop and they would clean up and after. The water came up so low, so high underground, with so much air, and the amount of ore that was there to, to extract was get, getting limited. And, the, and everyone knew that? Yes. Okay. So they figured, so that's going to bother, close her down. Yep. How, how did you find out that that was it? <laughs> I don't know, it just word of mouth, probably so. Everybody said, hey, they're not going to reopen. Is that maybe something you heard from your father as well? Do you think he would have had other knowledge of that? Yeah. Or that he was he was finished, I guess, by that time? 65. Yeah. 62. Yeah. 62. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure he still would have had his oh, yeah. ear to the ground. Yeah, so he's not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, 
so I don't know. Uh, I just left it up to the people. They figured, hey, if you want to, the older people probably thought, well, good, I, I'll just start throwing pension, you know. But somebody like me, I figured, well, I don't know how long I was off, to tell the truth. Several months in the summertime, I was enjoying that. Okay. <laughs> well, well, yeah, at least it wasn't January, right? <laughs> right. So, yeah. yeah, so I guess what, you had worked here for about 15 years then when that would have happened, so. Um, here, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if you were a young enough man, you had to go find something else. I mean. But, but to take a couple weeks or a month off was, was pretty nice that time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So did you ever consider going down to Morgantown to work at Grace? I Lines? did not. Like a lot of people did. I kind of, in my mind, I thought, you if that's the only choice, well then maybe, but why drive down to Morgantown back and forth every day or move down, which I didn't want to do, so that was out of the question. I'll go to Danville or Lebanon. I'd like to say I took Lebanon first. And then that stopped. I'm, in a way, I was playing that to get out of that, the plane. Right. Yeah. It, you know, one of the things that, that kind of amazes me about this area is that uh, Cornwall, you know, Bethlehem Steel was such a, a large employer, and the mine was such a large part of that, mm -hmm. that just one day that went away. That quickly, yeah. And that would have affected, you know, That's hundreds deep. of families yeah. that lived in this yeah. area but yet the area didn't go into this kind of bleak depression like so many other places do yeah, because there were some of these other, other opportunities. Other options, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I have to say, I, I went to Lebanon and got out of there, but then I ended up as a foreman at Andrew. Okay. I, I did all right up there. I had a lot of different jobs and knew a lot of things. That's why I became a former director. But it all started as a mucker here at uh, Cornwall. It did. <laughs> okay. It. All it. right. Start from the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the best way to know a job. To know all of it. True. You start at the bottom, you know it all. So. Yeah. Well, do you have uh, mics? Do you have any, any questions? <clears throat> For sure he does. Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think how to maybe integrate something, but no, I don't off the top of my head. So. I guess I'll just ask you one other question. You know, so many people that worked here at Cornwall lived in company housing, but your family was in Rexmont pretty much the entire time, weren't they? Correct, yes. So you owned a house right. then from right away. You know, I, I find that quite an accomplishment. You know, you know, folks that came over from Italy, didn't know English, got jobs here within Cornwall, mm -hmm. were homeowners almost right away. So I mean, that I think that shows determination in your family, but I also think that shows the opportunity that was available here as right. well. Uh, some of that, thanks to the company, they, they built like Martin's Village mm -hmm. and Bird Home, and they. Of course, they put all their homes in. I don't know, originally, maybe people just rented there, but near the end, there people were buying it. Right. They, they owned it. Yeah, Bethlehem Steel wanted to get out of the real estate business and started selling those yeah, off to the yeah. families, which I think it was like 99 point whatever percent of the people that were offered their home bought it, So, which was another thing that yeah. you know, people had enough that they could do that. But my father, well, actually, the brick road, that's the Rexmont Row Homes. Yes. That's where my dad lived. He probably owned that home, but he lived there. Unless the company did, I don't know. This is way back. Okay. Maybe right, like third state. I think I was born there. He might have been born there. But he bought a, a small farm back at Rexmont, okay. which wasn't connected to the company. He bought that, and that's where he stayed. And I bought. He moved. He bought a home. He built a home in Cornwall. Okay. And moved down there and sold me his home where where we lived for quite a number of years in Rexmont. So you had you had mentioned that your mother had 
worked in the sewing factory there. Yes. And so your father worked here for the company. What other businesses were in Raxmon at, at you know kind of years ago that you can remember? None. Other than there was two separate factories. Okay. Both equipment up there and both them. One not near the fire hall and one actually my dad built built this big building when he bought that home back there. He had pretty many acres. He bought that. He, he bought most of the lower ranch lot there and sold them off different building lots. Okay. But he built a pretty big building which became a factory. And uh, that was one of the factories in Rexmont was actually on his property. Okay. He, he, he kept the building. And when I bought the, the land, the house from him, I got the factory too. It was no longer a factory at that time. I was my first. Was that a shirt factory? Uh, women's apparel. I women's apparel. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time, Nick. Well, I, I hope I need information that you can use. Well, it's, it's all good information to use, and you know, it's good to hear different people's perspectives, because I know that you know people working even with the same company that have very different ideas oh, and very yeah. different experiences. Right. So thank you very much for, for giving us your experiences your and pleasure. your time, and uh, I, I thank you very much. Do you have questions for us? Well, <laughs> not okay, no. <laughs> I wish I did. I'd be the time to ask it, right? <laughs> We're the humble side of the family. <laughs> right. we, we get along with everybody. We don't ask questions. <laughs> so, what, what other families did your family associate with? Were there other families? I'm sure that there had to be some families that were you'd be more friendly with than others. Hmm. Because certainly you intermarried. There were certain families that you all intermarried with. Because how many siblings did you have? Three. You had. Do you have three siblings? Uh, sister and two brothers, right? Uh, yeah. Two brothers and a sister. You're okay. Right. You're right. Okay. You're right. So you had some different families that they that everyone was intermarried with. So, um, so what? Yeah, but it was all local. It was all you know, families, right? Married. Yeah. At least with the boys, you went to school with the girls you ended up marrying, for the most part. You guys all went to Cornwall. That's true. Yeah. You and Aunt Teresa and my mother and your brother Ben's wife. All of them. All, all of right. them. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember uh, Bethlehem Steel doing work for the school district? Uh, probably through my father, who was uh -huh. connected with the school uh -huh. and BS. I don't have any particular incident, but I'm, I'm sure. I don't know how much, and this is Mike Bernard, but I have a receipt when they, over here at the old high school, when they put the little round pool out in the field back in the late 40s. It was like a wading pool. I remember when I was a kid, we would always hot summer days yeah. go over and go in the pool. There's a note on some material receipts for that in my grandfather's files that say, Bethlehem Steel provided the labor, or Bethlehem Steel paid for the concrete, or whatever. So it obviously happened. They supported yeah. things with the school district. But the and that's one, that was the only specific thing I've right. seen. There's certainly more like that. Oh, know. yeah, for sure. But that pool, you know, is gone. Yep, long gone. And most of the, most of the school board back in those days were Bethlehem Steel management. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so your mother, Mike, is his sister. Is that right? No. Because no. his father is my, my father is his brother. Oh, your father. Okay. Yes. It's his brother. Okay. Yeah. To really confuse you, my father's a DR Bernard. 
but his name was Dennis. Ah, but they, <laughs> not Dewey. He, nope, he, came, he got the DR initials. But he was the youngest. I think he liked that, that he was yeah, DR Bernard, because so, yep. Dad was the godfather. <laughs> wow. Well, that's cool. Thank you for your service. Well, thank you. You helped make America what it is today. <laughs> The good, the good parts of America. <laughs> 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 Got to clarify. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, thanks for your time coming over. Yeah, no problem. <laughs>